Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 11F, where we're going to talk about genetic chimeras, and in the next lecture, microchimeras. So we'll define chimeras, cells that have different genetic origins but live in the same organism. We'll talk about the processes by which natural chimeras arise and artificial chimeras that are created both as a side effect of organ transplants and deliberately in experimental animals for research purposes. So the term chimera comes from Greek mythology where it referred to an animal that was part lion, part goat, and had the tail of a snake. It's been used in genetics to refer to an organism that creates cells of independent origin and thus of independent genotypes. We should first make a distinction between chimeras and mosaics because we're all genetically mosaic. Our cells have different genotypes. We started out with cells with a single genotype, but many of our cells acquire different genotypes because of somatic mutations. In contrast, very few of us are chimeras. In chimeras, some cells began with different genotypes because they had different ancestry. True spontaneous chimerism, naturally occurring chimerism, can happen mainly as an accident of fertilization or very early events in pregnancy. Um, one way is by the fusion of two independently arising embryos. This would be called embryo amalgamation. And I've diagrammed it here as occurring when two independent zygotes are formed, different eggs fertilized by different sperm, and then those two zygotes fuse either at the single cell stage or very early in embryonic development. And thus, what would have been fraternal twins grow into a single person with a mixture of two sets of genes, but both derived from the same parents. A second way that this can arise, a little more common, is double fer fertilization. In this case, there's only a single egg involved, but it's fertilized by two sperm, which then go on to contribute to the genomes of two different parts of the embryo. So they all have the same maternal set, but different cells have different paternal sets. Again, both from the same father. These are very difficult to study. Very little is known about these true chimeras because so few people exhibit the um, phenotype of having two different genotypes in different cells in their body. We know a lot more about artificial chimeras that we create ourselves. And in humans, by far the most common kind are the chimeras that we create by organ transplants. Um, even a blood donation, a blood transfusion can be considered as temporarily creating a chimera. And um, any kind of tissue transplant, a heart transplant, kidney transplants, um, these create deliberately create chimeras. Now, they're done for medical urgency in usually in individuals whose organ, own organs are failing, um, but they create a very serious problem for our bodies because of the phenomenon of re tissue rejection. Our immune systems have evolved to be able to recognize foreign proteins on the surfaces of cells as a sign that this is not a part of the body. This is something against which it should mount an immune response and destroy the cells. This means that when our bodies receive cells that come from another person, very often they're going to have different proteins on the cell surface. In fact, unless that person was an identical twin, they're always going to have different proteins on the cell surface because of one particularly polymorphic complex, a large gene family called the major histocompatibility complex. And it consists of a large number of related genes, each of which codes for proteins that are present on the cell surface. And each of these exists 
in many different alleles. So just like with DNA fingerprinting, there's many, many different combinations of alleles that different people inherit at their major histocompatibility complex. And again, two different versions, one from mom and one from dad. So people are never completely identical unless they're twins. And because these are a primary target of the immune system, it's necessary for transplants to make sure that as many of the alleles as possible be match between the donor and the recipient. Because they can't all be matched, we still need immunosuppression treatment as well to damp down the immune system and prevent the recipient's immune system from destroying the transplant. Rejection isn't an issue with natural chimeras, and that's because the immune system it learns um, during the development of the fetus, the immune system learns what's self by recognizing any proteins that are present during that developmental period are treated as self. It's only proteins that haven't been encountered before that will subsequently be treated as foreign. So chimeras are okay. Their tissues aren't rejecting each other. Now, the other way that chimeras arise artificially is that we create them on purpose for research purposes. And I'm only going to describe one type, and that's the type that's called a humanized mouse. These are mice that carry, instead of the normal mouse immune system, they have a human immune system. So all of their T cells and their B cells, all of their cells that produce antibodies, are actually human cells. And this means that these mice are an excellent experimental system in which to study the human immune system, to do experiments that you couldn't actually do in people. Creating these mouse and human chimeras uses techniques a lot like those used for a bone marrow recipient in people. So as with a case with incurable leukemia, the mouse is treated with harsh chemotherapy drugs that kill all of the immune system cells. And then very quickly, the mouse must then be given a transfusion of human immune system cells. And if it's done right, the mouse's former immune system won't be around to attack the new immune system cells that are coming in, and the new immune system will take over the functions of the destroyed mouse immune system, producing what's called a humanized mouse. Of course, it's important to realize that this mouse is humanized only with respect to the cells of its immune system. In every other aspect, it's a normal mouse. So we've talked about natural chimeras, how they can arise by accidents of fertilization, but they're very rare. We've talked about artificial chimerism that we create medically whenever we do a transplant, and the problem of rejection of transplants because of mismatched alleles for cell surface proteins, especially at the major histocompatibility complex genes. And we talked about being able to study the human immune system experimentally by creating mice that are humanized. They've had their mouse immune system completely replaced with a human immune system, so they are definitely chimeras. Coming up next, we're going to talk about a related phenomenon called microchimerism that's much more common than true large-scale chimerism and affects almost all of us. I hope to see you there.